This particular video then is going to look at animal studies and there's been many many animal studies on attachment and a lot of the theories that we're going to be looking at in a little bit about why attachment actually occurs are based on animal studies. So firstly we're going to look at Lorenz's study and we're going to look at the AO1 first. There's two main studies we're going to have a look at in this video. Lorenz's study on geese and Harlow's study on monkeys. So Lorenz Gosling's study, and you can see Lorenz here with his lovely geese, is I want you to watch a video clip first to give you a bit of background about the particular study. So pause this video, watch this YouTube clip about how Lorenz conducted his study. And then we'll come back and carry on this video. So the aim of the study was to investigate whether and to investigate the attachment behaviours in geese. So what he did was he conducted an experiment and he randomly divided a clutch of goose eggs. So he had the goslings in the eggs and he divided them into two separate groups. Half of them hatched with their natural mother and that was a control group in natural environment and hatched with the mother. And then the other half hatched in an incubator where the first thing that they saw was Lorenz, this man right here in the middle. So we've got our control group, which hatched naturally with the mother, and the incubator group, which hatched in an incubator with Lorenz as the first thing that they saw. So we've looked how we conducted the study. Now we're going to have a look at the finding of Lorenz. And what we found was that the incubator group followed him everywhere. So you can see in this little picture here, these geese or goslings followed Lorenz everywhere he went. And the control group followed their natural mother everywhere she went. Um, and what Lorenz also did was he then put all the baby geese together, the goslings together, and into one big group and mixed them up. And he found that when he walked away, all of those geese that initially saw him and were in the incubator group followed Lorenz. All the geese that were born naturally with the mother followed the mother. And what Lorenz termed this was, or termed this particular process, he termed it as imprinting. Okay, that Lorenz had imprinted on the goslings that were born with him, and the mother had imprinted on the goslings that were born with her. And a lot of bird species attach to the first thing that they see. The first moving object that they see, they will imprint on and attach to. And this happens within the initial few hours. So Lorenz found out that it happened within 12 to 17 hours of their birth. And that is called a critical period. So the first moving thing that they see in between 12 and 17 hours would be the thing that they attach and imprint on. And once this happens, it's irreversible. So those geese would always follow Lorenz around. They'd imprinted on him, so they will always follow Lorenz. And if it doesn't imprint during that critical period, so if it doesn't imprint in that 12 to 17 hours, the bird will not imprint at all on anything. And Lorenz came up with the idea that this was all due to survival, that birds imprint on something so it helps them to survive. It provides them with protection. It provides them with someone that will feed them. And that was the whole reason behind the imprinting. Lorenz also found something very interesting. He found something called sexual imprinting and that birds who imprinted on humans, like the goslings with Lorenz, would only attempt later on in life to mate with humans. OK, so there's, as well as having imprinting for survival, there's also this idea of sexual imprinting. So his findings are in birds and imprinting is very, very similar to attachment because it supports the idea that attachments are innate. There's something that babies are naturally born with. Babies are born with a drive to attach to an adult. This is very similar to the idea of imprinting. And it also shows us that we are biologically programmed to innate to innately attach and form a bond with a caregiver. So similar to attachment, shows us that it's innate, that we are biologically programmed to form a bond with a caregiver. So now we're gonna look at how to evaluate 
Lorenz's study. So we can look at all those points you're bringing for an evaluation or AO3 point. And some of his observations have been questioned. And there's a study conducted by Gritton in 1966. And what he did was he had chickens attach an imprint onto a yellow rubber glove. Yeah, he got a rubber, yellow rubber glove and made the chickens attach an imprint onto that. And what he found was that these chickens tried to mate with rubber gloves when they were older. Okay, so once they got to adults, they tried to mate with rubber gloves rather than other chickens. However, going against Lorenz's theory, um, he found that with experience, and if you had the chickens around other chickens, that with experience, they would learn to prefer mating with other chickens. So it shows us that imprinting maybe isn't as permanent as Lorenz first believed. Lorenz believed that once you imprint on something, that is it permanently done. Whereas Gwitton's study shows that through experience, birds can learn to mate, especially sexual imprinting, mate with other birds instead of what they've initially imprinted on. There's also an amazing real world application to Lorenz's theory. And this is the idea that some migratory birds are imprinted onto microlight aircrafts. And you can see the picture below, a microlight aircraft the glider with the migratory birds following behind it. And what this can do is this can teach these birds migratory flight patterns. So it allows us as especially scientists to reintroduce birds to areas where they've become extinct. So we can teach them the migratory flight paths that those birds would usually have taken. The birds will then follow the micro light aircraft to the particular area, and they can then exist where they may have become extinct before. So it does have a real world application. It can help us reintroduce birds to areas where they've become extinct by imprinting them onto these micro light aircraft. So we've looked at Lorenz's Gosling study, and now we're going to have a look at Harlow's monkey study. And we're going to look at the AO1 first. So what this video on YouTube it gives you a really good idea of what Harlow's study was all about. It basically goes through the study and what they found and shows you how the monkeys interacted with the two different mothers that Harlow presented to them. So watch the video, then come back and we'll continue with this. The aim of this study then was to demonstrate that attachment was not based on feeding, that it wasn't just the person who fed the child became the primary attachment giver, that there was more to it than just feeding. And that's what Harlow wanted to show in this study. So hopefully you've watched a YouTube clip now and you have an idea of the key words that I'm going to be going through now. If you haven't watched the video, go back, watch it, because it'll make all this an awful lot clearer for you. So we're going to go through the procedure of how he conducted his experiment first. So he had eight rhesus monkeys and he set up two wire mothers in each cage. You can see in this little bottom drawing down here, we've got um, what the two wire mothers look like. One was covered in cloth. This one here was covered in cloth and one was a plain wire mother. So you can see nothing around the body there, just plain wire, whereas this monkey had some cloth Put around it there. So we had two different conditions to this experiment. In condition one we had four monkeys and the milk bottle was within the cloth mother. In the second condition we had another four monkeys and the milk bottle this time was within the plain wire mother. So we've got two different conditions with a milk bottle in either of the wire mothers. And the time spent with each of the mothers was recorded by Harlow and his team. And we also measured their response to fear. So bringing in a mechanical teddy and seeing how they responded to that. So what did Harlow find in his study? Those of you that watched the video will already know this. Um, they found that all eight monkeys spent more time with the cloth mother. So whether it had the feeding bottle or not, all eight monkeys spent more time with the cloth mother. Um, those that were fed from the plain wire mother only spent a short amount of time with it. They'd go to the plain wire mother, get fed, 
and then they'd return for the rest of the time to the cloth mother. When they were frightened, so when we introduced that mechanical teddy, the monkeys always went and clung to the cloth mother. They never spent any time with the plain wire mother when they were frightened. When we introduced new toys, so they'd introduce new toys into the cage, the monkeys always kept one foot on that cloth mother. They were using it as a secure base. They were using it for reassurance that someone was there for them while they were playing with the new toy. So it shows us that comfort and contact are the most important things for developing attachment. Those monkeys attached to the cloth mother because it was the most comfortable one. Even when the wire mother had the food, the monkeys still attached to the cloth mother and spent most time with the cloth mother as well. Interestingly, Harlow also found some long lasting effects on these monkeys. He found that those motherless monkeys, so the monkeys put in the cage, develop abnormally later on in life. They were socially abnormal, so they froze or ran away and fled from their peers. And they were also sexually abnormal, so they didn't engage in the mating rituals that were normally associated with this particular monkey. And also, those mothers that were in the cage in this experiment and brought up with one of the two mothers also tended to become poorer mothers themselves later on in life. Harlow also found that there was a critical period for attachment and that monkeys could recover, okay, they could recover from these damaging effects as long as they spent time with their peers before the age of three months. So as long as monkeys were moved out of the cage with the wire and cloth mothers before the age of three, then they were able to reverse the effects that we've stated up here. So Harlow's found that they're definitely attached to cloth mothers and that there is long lasting effects to not having a real primary attachment figure. So we're going to now look at a few evaluation points for Harlow's experiment. And the first one we're going to look at, and this also applies a little bit to Lorenz's study, is that it's very difficult to generalise findings from animal studies to humans. We have very different physiological and psychological attributes. Psychologically, we're far more advanced and more complex. Physiologically, we have completely different biological makeups. So it does make it very hard to generalise the findings to humans. But it's not impossible to generalise the findings, otherwise we wouldn't teach it to you. Um, human decisions are governed by conscious decisions. Okay, We have far more complex psychology than animals. And that's why it makes it very difficult to generalise these findings. And therefore, we might not find the same results in this study if we were to conduct it on humans. However, we're never going to be able to conduct one of these studies on humans. We have to use animals for ethical reasons. It's very unethical and would not be allowed to take a newborn infant baby, put it in a cage with a wire mother and a cloth mother. So we have to do these sorts of studies. However, it does support Schaefer and Emerson's findings, okay, that we do not attach to those who feed us. So although it's very difficult to generalise the findings to humans, it does support what we have found in human studies. Now, we don't just attach to the humans and primary caregivers who feed us. That comfort and contact and responsiveness are the most important things to develop an attachment bond. And the final point we're going to talk about is this idea of ethical issues within the studies. The monkeys did suffer greatly and it left long lasting effects on those particular monkeys. They were unable to form relationships with peers, were sexually abnormal as well. And it really questions whether the study should have been done at all with monkeys. However, it is possible that the benefits have outweighed the costs of the animals involved. So potentially we have learned more as a result of this study when we compare it to the costs of the animals involved. For example, it's had a ginormous and really significant impact on our understanding of attachment. And this has really improved our care for children and in humans and also in primates. So children in care homes, etc., are now given a lot more care and comfort and contact and responsiveness as a result of these findings. So it's potential that the benefits have outweighed the costs. However, 
it still raises the fact whether it should have been done at all in the first place.